in this video we are going to be adding uh, some movement to our camera because as you can see up here maybe it's a little hard but our level is larger than the actual camera's viewport here uh, the line goes down here and here we would like to be able to move the camera around here so that we can see the whole level so that we're not bound to make levels that has the size of the camera width and height and um, so we can make as large level as we want and we can just move around with the camera to place towers on the map so to do this we will have to create a new uh, script and this script should be called camera movement so go to your script folder right click create and c sharp script and call it camera movement when you have created that script we need to write some code and basically um, this code i'm going to write here is going to be very simple um, so maybe you already know how to do all this uh, but it will be more complicated later when we need to restrict the bounce of the camera so that it can't go off the map but right now we're just going to add the functionality so that it can actually move within the um, outside the bounce of the map as well so first of all we need a speed so make a private float called camera speed and set it equal to zero from the get-go because then we can set it in our inspector um, and adjust it from there when you have set it to zero, we need to be able to see it in the inspector. So we are going to serialize the field as we usually do when we need to uh, access something from the inspector in Unity. So the next thing we are going to do is to create a function called private void get input. And this function here will take the player's input and um, actually move the camera around. So first of all, we need to make some if statements here. And this is um, the reason that I'm doing this is because it makes it easier for us to clamp the, the um, what's it called, the position later. But for now, make an if statement. So if input that get key down, key code, the W. So if we press the W button, well, then we say transform, to translate, vector free, dot up, multiplied by camera speed multiplied by time dot delta time like so okay so now we can actually move upwards and um, the point is that this translate transform the translate will move uh, the camera around on the screen based on whatever we tell it to do in here inside the parameters so we tell it to move upwards when we press the W button and we multiply it with the camera speed and multiply it by time to delta time. So time to delta time is the amount of time that has passed since last time update was called. And by multiplying by that, uh, we will account for the time so that the camera will move the same speed on all uh, devices. So if we run a mobile phone that hasn't, uh, that isn't as powerful as a computer, um, home computer as I'm sitting at here, uh, the camera might run faster on a computer if we don't take the time into account. So that's why we are multiplying by time, that delta time. Anyway, this was W. We can actually just copy and paste this three times uh, underneath. And then W, A, S, and D. So now we have W, A, S, D. And on A, we of course need to go to the left. So we right left here. On S we need to go down. And on D we need to go to the right. So now you actually have the code for moving um, the camera from side to side. But right now we're not executing get input anywhere. But we need this code to be executed. So to execute it we need to go to update and write get input. Like so. So now we have our get input functionality and we can delete start actually and we can write private here just to just for good measure so now we have the input function so if we save this and go to unity well then this script here actually um, take the transform to translate from uh, and move the transform on the object it's sitting on and we wanted to move the camera so we take the camera script and move it onto the camera so that it has the, the script on it. And if we just play the game now, you will not be able to move anywhere. And that's because the camera has zero speed. So to give the camera some speed, we can simply just say five, for example, and then your camera is able to move. But you can see here, you can't hold down the key. 
you have to let go and click the key um, to move around. And that's because I wrote some wrong code. I used input to get key down instead of get key. So the code is only executed right when we click the button. You see input.getKey down, which means that this code here for moving the camera gets executed right when I pr press the key down and then it stops. So we really need to write get key instead, like so. So we can replace all the get key down with get key. There we go. And then save. And then we jump back to Unity. And remember to select the main camera and put a speed if you didn't do it before, because you can see if I put five speed here and I stop playing the game, then it reverts back to zero. So I can put five before I play the game, then it, it stays as five. And now you can see I can hold down the buttons here to pan around on the on the map here. But our movement is not restricted at all. We can simply move over the edges of the of the map and everything. So we need to do something so that we restrict the camera's movement. So let's try to do that. So to make sure that our camera doesn't move over the edges of our map, we will have to make sure that we can take on-screen coordinates and translate them into world coordinates so that we know we don't uh, pass the edges of the map. Because if you look here, you can see, I know it's very hard to see, but we have our camera, the white line here. And this white line is never supposed to pass the bottom right um, corner here, because if it do so, then does so, then we can actually see the blue edge um, on, around our map, and we're not uh, we're not interested in that. We would like the camera only to go to about here or something, so that it never goes over the edge of the actual level, and this will be way more precise, of course, so that it doesn't um, go over at all uh, on the map. So to do so, we will have to understand how we could translate on-screen coordinates to world coordinates. And to do so, we will have to use something called view to uh, viewport to world point. So we can take a point on our viewport, and our viewport is actually this um, white thing we see here, the white um, square. So the viewport is what we can see. And we need to take a, the bottom right here and translate that into a world coordinate so we know we don't exceed the limit here. And this is just the Unity script reference here. I'm just going to show you that if we look at this, the viewport space is uh, normalized like this. The bottom left of the camera is called 0, 0.0. The top right is called 1.1. So if we look at that, we'll see the bottom left is called 0, 0.0. It's down here. Let me just move this camera so right there and uh, this one up here is called 1.1 which means that this one down here should be called 1.0 because 1 um, 0, 0.0 and 1.1 and 1.0 over here so this point 1.0 is what we need to get the actual world uh, coordinate from and we need to translate it into a world space coordinate to a vector free and make sure that that one doesn't exceed the limits here. So with that in place, I hope you understand what we're going to do. Then we're going to write some code. So open up your camera movement script and in here we need to create a new function. So make a private void set limits. And if I could hit my keys correctly, apparently I can't. There we go. And it needs to take in something, but we will handle that in a second. First of all, we need the world coordinate of the right side of the camera here. So we go 1.0.0, then we go 1 out on the x-axis, and we're still in 0 on the y-axis, so it's 1.0 here. So this is the point we need. So we can say vector free, it's called p, equals camera dot main dot viewport uh, port to world point so we take our camera and this actually accesses the main camera and we need to take a point on the viewport and the viewport point we need is a new vector free called um, 1.0 there we go so this is the right bottom corner of the screen we translate into a coordinate here which is saved in Let's go. Um, let's just call VP World Point here. 
There you go. Okay. So the next thing we need to do is to get the actual point of the max tile or the, the amount of, of um, what is called um, range we can move. And to do that, we'll have to access the actual tile down here. We need to get this tile and calculate the distance from here to the camera so that we know how much we can actually um, move. And the same goes from, to, from the top here to the bottom because this little tile down here um, let's see here, the point right here is actually our limit, right? So we need to get that point and make sure that this corner doesn't go over this corner. So we need a vector free and let's call it max tile. So this is the position of that max tile. So we need an X limit and a Y limit. So let's go up here and make a private x limit, uh, x max, let's call it that. And it's, it's, it's just going to be a float. And then make a private float called y max. So this is going to be the limit for the x value. And this is going to be the limit for the y value. Okay, so now we have some variables to store this limit in. Next thing we have to do is to say the x max is equal to max tile dot x minus the world point dot x. So if we take the max tiles position minus the world point position, then we have how much we can move, right? Because we have a tile somewhere, let's say out here, take that position minus this position, then we know how much we can move. And we have to do the same for y, so y max equals max tile, y equals world point dot y go and let's save this um, so now we have the functionality for doing this but we need to call the set limits and set the max tile so we will do this in a little in a smarter way later when we have added a helper class and everything uh, but for now we're just going to do, do it the easiest way uh, it's not the best way to do it um, but it's the most handy way for us right now to do this thing so if we go to the level manager, um, then we have to add something to the, what is it called, the create level function here. Let's find it right here. And then we're simply going to create a vector free called max tile. And we have to set it equal to vector free dot zero. If you don't do this, then it's going to complain and tell you that you're trying to use an unassigned variable. So we just have to set it equal to something. So down here, when we place a tile, we actually get the position down here when we set the transform position right here, right, in the place tile function. So every time we place a tile, we just return that, we can return that position. And when we're done, we always get the latest, latest tile because we start placing our tiles from the top down here, all the way it runs like this. And the last time tile we place is always this one down here. So this is not the best way as I told you to do this. We will do it in a better way where we only access this tile. But right now we are going to set the max tile position to equal to the next tile we place. So every time we place a tile, the max tile will be equal to a new position. And when we're done, it will end up with this as position. So we can simply just rewrite our max tile here to so say, it returns a vector free and then we simply need to return new tile dot transform the position so now it actually returns the position of the tile we just placed so we can go up here and say max tile equals this tile we place so max tile will now be equal to the tile we just placed so now we will have the position of the actual tile that we are going to um, place in the end. Now we need to use this max tile, max tile and give this feed this to the set limits function here. As you can see here, we need the vector free max tile. Um, so we need to call that. And to do so, we can actually uh, make a private camera um, movement. What was that? Camera movement there. Yeah, so we have a camera movement up here. 
and we can simply just serialize it as we did with with this with the tile prefabs so we can see it in the inspector and then we can go down here after our for loop here just after it not inside it but after right camera movement dot set limits and you can see we can't see set limits here that's because i made it private i think so go to camera movement and set limits make it public like so then save and jump back to level manager and write camera movement again and set limits and then it needs the position which is max tile go so now we are executing the camera movement set limits and we've, we're feeding it the max tile here um, yeah okay so this is not enough we need to add some functionality to the camera movement um, to make this work so for example if we save this right now and jump to unity and select our level manager here take the main camera and move the main camera into the camera movement uh, part here and we start playing the game well then we can still move freely around here up and down and I can move too much to the left here um, and if you see then I'll still be able to move over in the right side here so this doesn't didn't really change anything and why is that well we're not using the limits for anything right now so we have to jump back into the script and go to camera movement and down here we have to write some code to limit the movement of the camera so we have to use a clamp to clamp the movement so we can actually uh, say transform dot position equals new vector free so we take the position after we have moved the camera up here we take and clamp the position by saying math f dot clamp and clamping is a way of making sure that a value doesn't exceed uh, these uh, values we put in here so we clamp the position to a new vector free where we use transform to position to x and it shouldn't be able to go below zero and it shouldn't be able to go over x max here and then the y value should be math f dot clamp dot transform dot position dot y comma um, zero comma max there we go and actually it shouldn't be y max because we're going down so actually we should we should actually rename this one click on it press f2 and write y minimum instead of max and then we should use it as the minimum value here as you can see when i'm writing here it asks for the minimum value which is y minimum and zero because yeah, I forgot we're going downwards, so we should switch. It's not Y maximum, it's not the top, it's the bottom we are looking at. Bottom left tile, as you remember. Okay, so now we have something that sets the limit. So if we save this and jump back into Unity, then there's still some problems. As you can see, now we can't even uh, see anything here. But I am on, on, the, on, this, um, on the tiles here, but I can't see anything. And the reason of that is because the C position here of the a camera is zero and it keeps setting it to zero you can't even change it to something else so we need to make sure that our Z position here is um, for example minus 10 so we give the vector free here out here comma minus 10 now we set the um, Z position as minus 10 so that we can go here play the game and now you can see your map again because the camera is further away from the tiles before it was on top of the tiles and then the tiles go through the camera and we can't see them so now we're just clamped in, in clamping it to this position here instead but i'm not able to move correctly around as you can see here i'm missing one length of the tiles here i'm not going to the edge as you it's hard to see but i'm going to this edge and i can't move up but that's fine but i can move too far down um, and I and I'm fine. So the top the left side and the top side is correct But the bottom and the right side is wrong. So we need to do something here and that's inside our level manager When we set the lim limits we are missing something We need to use the width of the tiles to make sure that we actually use the correct um, values, so we need to say new vector free 
and we need to say max tile dot x plus tile size comma max tile dot y minus tile size so these are the values so now we are creating a new vector free as the max tile and we're using the max tiles x position plus the, plus the tile size so we get that extra tile size out and as you can see we were going too far down as you can see here we were missing one tile so we need to add that tile size to the limits and as you can see here we are going too far down so we need to reduce the um, amount of space we can move down uh, with the height of or the size of these tiles so comma minus tile size that uh, minus max tile that y minus tile size here so let's try to save this and jump back into unity and rerun the game so if we run the game now you would see that the x value here fits perfectly it goes to the edge here and it can't go up but if you go down you're still able to move too far down so we need to figure out why we can exceed the limits in the bottom and i have an idea why but let's uh, take a look at that and figure out what's wrong because we're going way too far down here so let's try to open up the camera movement script to find the error and i already see the error here <laughs> in my set limits function i wrote max tile y equals vp dot y so it should be minus here vp dot y and let's try to save it again so now it should actually calculate the minimum value of y better maybe you already caught this earlier when i was writing this and maybe you're screaming at your screen for me to change it um but yeah now i tested it and now i figured out that this was the problem so uh, jump back into unity run your game right here and now you shouldn't be able to go too far uh, too far here so as you can see here now the limits are actually correct you can't go over the right edge you can't go over the bottom edge and you can't go over the top and the and the left side here so now we have a camera that can pan around on our level no matter how large it will get um, so this is it for this video. In the next video, we'll start adding some more functionality for um, the actual gameplay, I think. But yeah, let's see what we're going to do. Um, thank you very much for watching. And remember that InScope Studios is a community found page. And um, that's why your support is very important to me. You can support me in different ways. You can follow me on social media pages. You can subscribe to this channel. Um, and you can also support me by um, getting all my projects. You can do that on the Patreon page in the top of the screen right here. And if you support me, that you'll just get all projects that I've ever created for my tutorials. And you will also be able to um, get private tutoring if that's what you want to. In the bottom, you can support me by getting one of my projects as a standalone product. So again, thank you very much for watching.